So at the outset, I want to express my regret at not being here in person. I would have very much liked to be and at the original date which was suggested, I was there. But because I have to go for some other commitments, I am not here in person and I really missed that opportunity. But this session is all about technology and we will use this technology in some way to be able to share my thoughts with you on this occasion. The story of using technology for education has evolved over a significant period of time but has taken very rapid jumps in recent time. What was accessible to only a few, and I mean that because when I was in IIT Kanpur, we had the only educational television production center in the country. When I was in Indira Gandhi Open University, we had the only educational broadcasting system and also a high level production system. Today, everybody who has a mobile phone with camera in his hand has both a receiving system and a production system. So this is one major thing about technology coming all over. But it's not only about technology being omnipresent or ubiquitous, it is about technology adding new dimensions to the teaching learning process. First question to ask is, if technology is the answer, then what is the question? And the question really is very simple. We all know that the best education is a one-on-one -on -one education and in our tradition of the Upanishad, the learner actually sat by the side of the Guru and the Guru taught him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We know therefore that if the teaching model is based on a one-on-one -on -one model, the quality of teaching will decrease as the number of participants increase and since all of you are technical people it will decrease as 1 upon n and therefore you will find that if you have a classroom of more than 20 people or 30 people that the effective teaching becomes very very poor. However, because of the new opportunities in technology this can be overcome. So Bloom, the famous education, is said that the objective of technology in education should be to have a mass education which is as good as one-on-one -on -one education. So that is the overall goal and this is very important to understand that education is different from broadcasting. Broadcasting means that the same message goes to millions of people, fine, but learning happens in the mind of the learner and unless that customization, personalization and learning happens, the outcome of technology has not been achieved. Therefore, technology alone is not enough. It must be merged with suitable pedagogy. If we don't change the pedagogy, and this has been the big disappointment with MPTEL programs and even in some sense the MOOCs and many of these mass education things, that the pedagogy was still of teaching one-on-one, -on -one, but the model was of broadcasting. What we are now seeing is a point of inflection where actually personalization is happening. So Clayton Christensen is a very well known professor of disruptive innovation, in fact disruptive innovation in Harvard and he was asked to talk about what is the disruption in education and the answer to that question is that it is personalization of the learning experience. Now all of you now know that the mobile is a very personal device in the hands of everybody. You might buy a mobile, but when you examine two or three people's mobile, you see different apps, different thing, different thing. And this is what will happen to the learning as well. So what are the new pedagogies for this? The first most well-known and easily adoptable pedagogy is the pedagogy of flipped learning, where the instructor creates videos using the mobile itself or maybe better technology, and the learners peruse those videos before coming to class. And the class time is used for the interaction. Although this has been around for a few years, this is one thing which has shown improvement in marks obtained by the students and examinations. So very often when we talk of esoteric things about building higher order thinking skills and becoming better at deep thinking, is not very much appreciated. But when you create technology which allows you to get better marks, then everybody loves it. So flipped learning is number one. Along with flipped learning, you can have mastery learning. And which means that all your students can actually get A's. There is no reason why any student should not get A in the exam. The traditional bell curve happens because we don't focus on the pedagogy. We use a 
pedagogy or broadcast which is one size fits all and therefore different performances happen. But today you know in industry and manufacturing you talk about something like Six Sigma where the number of defects is one in a million. So we should only have one in millions of students who have not been able to achieve the learning goals but everybody else should be able to achieve. So flipped learning and mastery learning become two very important things. But the completely new dimension which technology is throwing up and will throw in the future is of what is called social learning. Social learning is a completely new phenomenon which is now possible because of the technology in everybody's hands. We often as educators think of Facebook as a nuisance but actually social learning is a far superior form of learning. As educators we don't know how to deploy it and therefore we decry it. Since all of you again are from technical background you will understand this very easily. If you decide that the network is going to be the educator and many of you with computer science background understand this, then if you have a n students in a group and you talk about connections between them, then you have n into n minus 1 upon 2 connections which is of the order of n square. This is also called the Metcalf law in networking. When you start applying this to learning, that means the larger the number of students, the better is the quality of social learning. And because India has a large student population, we could actually end up doing something wonderful. And I am not saying this because of trying to be something. You can look at Mike Sharple's report from the UK Open University. They are just beginning to understand social learning. So what we are saying is technology is not only for efficient broadcasting, but for better learning. Better learning in the sense of mastery learning and social learning. And actually if you look at People don't see it that way, but if you look at science, science is actually social learning because scientists from all over the world work on common problems. In the past they worked in completely discrete geographical locations, but in recent times if you look at the Higgs boson story, you know hundreds of thousands of scientists from all over the world have been working on a common problem. That is social learning. Social learning is not only sharing uh, images and photographs on Facebook or Instagram etc. You can actually bring it about to your learning as well. I am sure in the deliberations over the next couple of days you will learn of many more things, you will learn of things in detail and I am sure that we will end up transforming the entire education system and you have an advantage that you can do everything right here, right now and probably be a very good example for the whole world to follow. If countries like Finland and Norway and these things, the education system is being talked about in the world, I see no reason why educational systems and processes developed here and proven over a couple of years will not be the story of the whole world. In fact, we forget but India was considered the place where Max Müller came, Hoen Sang came, Fawan came. The entire world would come to India to seek learning. I'm sure in the future it will again do so. So all the best and enjoy your event. Okay.